What's going on guys and welcome back to a brand new blender bottle shaker filled with back sweat from who? I don't know, your choice. But today we're going to be talking about configuring Webpack to work with SCSS. Now the problem is that we could, it's not really a problem, but we don't want to create a link tag and then link to our style sheets. We don't want to really want to do that. What we want to do is actually do it via importing our style sheets and using it per um, component. So we create a style sheet for add option and we we want to import this style sheet for add option right here. So that way this add option could use that, right? We need to add some loaders just like we did with, um, let me see, let me go to uh, Webpack config. Just like we did with this Babel loader, we did, we, we were looking for all JS files. We're going to run it through Babel loader so that way it knows exactly what's going on, right? That's what we're going to do with CSS. We need to add in some loaders so that way this application knows exactly what to do with those with that CSS. Now, to get started, I'm going to create a a folder in inside of SRC and we're going to name it styles. And in here, I'm going to create a new file called styles.css. Now, I'm doing CSS for right now, so that way we could actually get Webpack working with CSS and then later on get Webpack working with SCSS. It's going to be all in the same video, but I'm just doing it right now. And right here, I'm going to do star because I'm going to make everything, I'm going to make the color green. Or you can make it whatever you want. But all I want to do is just get that style showing up here, okay? All right. So the way we're going to do that is actually using loaders. So the first two loaders that we're going to be using, and I will explain what, what they're doing, is yarn, add, we're going to use CSS loader, and we're going to use style loader. Dash, dash, dev, control, save. All right, so what the CSS loader does it creates a representational JavaScript file of the CSS. It's not it's not JavaScript, but it, it creates it as a reputation representation of JS. So that way Webpack knows how to deal with it. And the reason why it does that is that so that way we could use the where's the uh, components at? So that way we could use the import or require and that that way we could require it. So that's what it's doing right here. So that way we could use it with import, right? So that's what CSS loader does. Now style loader actually grabs that CSS and injects a link tag to our index.html. So you don't have to worry about creating an index at all or a link tag at all. It, that style loader does that for us. So in here, in our module, in our rules, we're going to create another rule and it's going to be almost the exact same thing as down below. I mean, up above. Let me actually make this pretty good. Like that. And there you go. Okay. Nope. So in here, we're going to use the exact same thing. We're going to be testing for something. So I'm just copy this. And what we're going to be testing is for CSS. We want to look for CSS files. Now, what we need to do instead of using loader, because loader is just for one actual loader, just like for Babel loader, we only need to use one loader here. If we need to use multiple loaders like we do for CSS, because we have down, we, we uh, just installed two loaders, we need to use the use property or key, right? And this is going to be an array. And this is where we actually tell it what loaders we want to use, obviously. So the first one, style dash loader, which is in charge of injecting the link tag for us, so don't worry about it. And the next one is the CSS loader, which is in charge of creating the CSS representation JS file. That's it. Okay. So if you control save this, we do need to run uh, the dev server once more time, one more time, because we just changed some stuff in here. And nothing's going to change just yet because we haven't even told our application to use this style sheet. So what we're going to do is go inside of app.js, which is right here. And this is where we're going to import our, import our, um, 
and you don't need to do from because we're not importing a, a specific name or a module from this thing we're just importing a style sheet so we're going to import from dot styles right there and then our styles dot css now if you control save this now we should see our there it is green application awesome 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 we have that working now now what we need to do is actually make it work with css or scss my bad so if you don't know what css scss is it's just a language is a preprocessor to make our lives a little bit more easier uh if you go to learn sas down below this is what we're going to be doing it just allows us to do a lot of things we could do nesting we could do variables we could do mix-ins it's just a lot of features that it has that makes our lives way more easier i'm pretty sure you already know about this stuff but the different sas and scss are exactly the same thing the only difference is that with scss we're using semicolons and brackets and sas we don't have those semicolons or brackets it's just indents it only knows it by indents so you could use whatever you want honestly i want I personally use SAS, but for this case, if people do not know what SESS or haven't worked with it previously, it is going to be a bit difficult for them to understand like what's going on. It might be hard for them to follow along if we don't have brackets and showing them what's going on. So I'm just going to use the SCSS, but you could use SAS if you want. Now, in our styles, I'm going to change this, rename it to SCSS instead of CSS. Now we are going to get an error because obviously Webpack doesn't know what's going on anymore. Like, like I said, we do need to do the same thing with SCSS, just like we did with Babel loader. So to do that, we do need to install two more loaders. Now, like I said, style loader and CSS loader, those aren't in charge of converting CSS to, I mean, SCSS to CSS. They're just in charge of like making that CSS file, a representation JavaScript file, and just injecting that into the page, right? That's that's the only thing they're doing. So we need to get a loader that is in charge of converting the SCSS to CSS. And that way these two loaders will take in charge. We'll, we'll take in charge. So those two loaders are called SAS, oh, actually yarn add SAS dash loader and node dash sas and then dash dash dev so that way we don't have to uh it doesn't save it in our dependencies i always say that but you already know what that does so with those two loaders the sas loader is in charge of of making it making it where we could use the import statement or the export or whatever with that sas file just like css it's just giving it, uh, is making, making us just making the, uh, God, this is so hard. I don't know why we could just, so for the SAS loader, the SAS loader is in charge of making us use, um, making it easier us. For, <sighs> so the SAS loader is in charge of letting us use the import statements to that way we could actually import SAS files just like the same way as CSS loader does. And the node SAS is that's actually in charge of converting SAS into CSS. So let's actually use that. Now it's pretty simple. The only thing we need to do in here is actually just type in SAS dash loader. And SAS loader actually uses node SAS in the background. So we don't have to include no SAS whatsoever. Now inside of, let's go to our styles right here. And here we could actually do something. We could actually create a variable, which I'm going to do. I'm gonna call it color. And I'm gonna set this color to, uh, to be, uh, let me see, yellow dash, Okay, let me see green. Green, now red. I'm going to say red. Screw it, red. Okay, and I'm going to just use that variable right here. Color. Now, if you control save this, we do need to start restart our dev server because we just added some stuff in our Webpack config. So let's do that right now. Yes, let's run it and then go back to bucket list app. And we should see it render, re-render. 
If it doesn't, then I'm going to just have to... Oh, we got an error. All right, right, right. Because we're not even using CSS anymore, we do have to go back to app.js and just change this to scss. Control save. Now if we actually do it, here we go again. I know what happened. Uh, I'm just going too fast. I need to slow down. What we need to do is we're not testing for files that end with CSS. We're testing for files that end with SCSS. So that way Webpack looks for those files. Now if you control save, it should. We do, we, we do need to rerun it one more time. So sorry about this, guys. Let's just rerun it. And we should get our brand new one up here. Yes, there you go. Red. Color red. Now it works, right? Because we're testing for SCSS files to making Webpack look for SCSS files instead of CSS. So that way it could do all these things. And like I said, you don't have to include the link tag in our HTML because you don't have to. It does it for us. If you go in here, you go to the head. And there's our style. Okay. It's pretty simple. Now, if you're a performance kind of guy, this is very inefficient. And the reason why is because it's actually loading everything one, one, at once. It's not waiting for, uh, like typically, it would run CSS files first because we included it in our head and then our script tags because we included it down here. But the thing is, now now that we interpreted our, uh, our CSS files are representatives of JS files, um, it's going to load all together, which is pretty sucky and you know, it's not a good thing. So in the next videos, don't worry about it. We are going to fix this error or not really an error, but we are going to tweak it. So that way our perform performance is top notch. But like I said, I think I cut out, but like I said, uh, we, you could use whatever loader that you want. Th these two are always going to be the same, but this is going to be different. If you want to use less, um, then use less and just tweak this to use that the extension for less and that's it you have it working so that is it for this video guys i hope you learned something in this video and like i said once we start using webpack a lot this is not it's not going to be confusing anymore i'm pretty sure you're understanding more and more how to use webpack and it's not as daunting as the first time you actually saw a file i know my first time was like what what is going on here? I did a lot of Stack Overflow uh, searches and <laughs> Google searches and just, I was like, wow, it's a lot to learn. But it's easier once you understand what's going on. So anyways, guys, thank you guys for taking time out of your day to watch this video and I hope to see you in the next video. So peace.